job at hand. Nothing too special. It is a seamless six inch pipe. So seamless, shed 40. Seamless meaning the pipe doesn't have a seam. It's completely um, yeah, seamless basically. I'm gonna be welding on a synergic root setting. So basically, most people would be welding on manual setting where you change the bolts individually to the wire speed. But this machine has programming where it's, for me it's saved on job number five and it is a root setting and it's standard synergic. So I control the amps and it automatically changes the wire speed on the volts. So I'll be welding all of my roots from anywhere from 120 amps all the way up to 150 amps. So you can see the parameters of the different power settings. So that's going to be that and then I'm going to be capping it, job number four, again, um, it's on pulse welding so I'm going to cap it again anywhere from 220 amps all the way up to 250, 60 amps. I, I, I turn the power up and down on the machine so I don't exactly know um, what power I'm going to be running at. My arc force arc length correction is going to be 1, pulse dynamic correction is going to be 0 0.8. Hello everybody and welcome back to Arc 1 Welding. Now listen, let me start off by saying I am ill. My voice is weird. You're going to have to put up with it because I was not going to sacrifice the quality of this video by just saying an intro letting you not know that I'm ill and disappearing for the rest of the video. So don't you worry, you're getting a full arc one welding narrate narrated video yes and a full narrated video until the end I'm, I'm gonna slug it through it who cares about how my voice sounds so yes that's out of the way i'm glad you have joined me for another video so yes in this video here we have some beautiful arc shots i'm excited to show you a lot them later on um but I'm, I've started this, this video off running basically. I've got my um, 6 inch T in the vise leveled off. Added on a sliver of pipe and now I am trying to level off my 45s. I always make sure anytime I'm dealing with any 45s everything has to be bang on level. The horizontal plane of the 45 has to be level. And then the face of it also has to be level. It's, I should say the plumb of the 45 has to be level. And then... I can always take it out, put it onto the table, use my um, 45 on the level to just level it off, make sure everything's good. I should check the set, I should check the height of it right now just to double check, make sure it's good. But I can worry about that later on because only a flange is going on there. Now you're going to see some, some of the arc shots. Would you look at this? So this here, the technique that I'm using, it is a short circuit MIG setting or MAG setting. Basically, every time the wire touches the molten pole, it short circuits and deposits its material. Very controllable, but also you don't get good penetration because it's, it's, it's low power. But that's why you feather both edges and you concentrate the power of the, the, the molten. You concentrate the power of the molten pull on the thinnest of the areas and it just melts everything together nicely. I'm rotating the pipe at the same time. I, I want the pipe to solidify anywhere from about 12 o'clock to 11 o'clock. It doesn't look like it here. It looks like I'm, I'm quite low on the pipe, but that's just the way how the camera sees it. But yeah, I'm trying to let gravity pull the molten pull through to create a root and then solidify. If you're too low down, gravity happens too fast and it drips the molten pull and you start to get kind of suck back and your root doesn't penetrate too far if you're too high up you deposit too much material like now you see i'm not really moving too much that's still depositing material so you have to adjust the torch angle or the position of the pipe to help gravity to uh, to, 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 to get gravity to help you fight and overcome the lack of movement that was a quick one the root pass was done now i'm doing the hot pass you know it's a big gap thick material 
Sometimes you can get away with not doing a hot pass with a smaller gap. Sometimes you have to do a hot pass. So it's always, if you're unsure, do a hot pass. Your cap will always come out nicer when you have to um, build up less material. So yeah, hot pass is going on. I, I couldn't tell you the power. Again, around 200 amps. I adjust it on the torch depending on the size of the gap, how I'm feeling, if I've just done a weld to the side of it and there's already heat in the material. But I'm making sure I stay under under flush. The one, once you start going above your material, it just becomes a nightmare trying to cap over it. Coming up is me doing the cap. So all my start stops are cleaned and they, and they happen at opposite directions. I don't start stop. I don't start a weld on top of a start stop. I would either do it after it or before it. I prefer to do bef after it. So when I get round to the start stop, there's pure heat ready to go into the start stop. If I if I start before the start stop, I've just welded it and that's already really hot. So it tends to the welds tend to come out flatter. So it just depends on the circumstances. But what you're about to see next is how even I can do a good weld right next to a bad weld. So the, the weld on the right was the first weld I done. The weld on the left was the second weld. And you can see a difference in the quality of the weld through a variety of reasons. The, my torch angle could have been off. Too much heat in the material. Um, I could be running low on gas so the, the gas flow went down. There's so many different reasons to get a good weld right next to a bad weld. So be happy anytime you do get a good weld. I forgot to hit the record button, but I lined up the piece to the side. I put the tap one side, double check, tap the other side. Now I'm using, I've used this shim to make sure that the two levels are equal. And also this is level to this crudely. Not perfect, but it's good enough. There are so many different methods to achieve the same outcome. So for mine, the pipe is already on the table. There's no reason to take it off of the table to put it into the vise to add extra bits onto it when you can see here I can use two V stands to bring this straight piece of pipe to the rest of the fittings and I can tack the top the bottom if I need to flip it 90 degrees tack it either side like I've just done now so this piece here is on a hundred percent now I have some extra pipe to clamp in the vise so it's not so hard trying to clamp the T into the vise so it gives gives me uh, I find it easier some people may not want to do that some people may want to clamp the T you see right on the screen now clamp that on the vise and add both sides of the pipe in one go I don't like doing that I do anything I can in the moment to avoid having to do any double handling majority of the fabrication is done I just need to weld it all together I'm leaving the flanges off just because the T is going to be a fitting on fitting flange onto the T. There isn't going to be much space to get the grinder in to um, weld either side of that T. So I'm just going to do it at the end. There's Some people swear by flanging at the very last moment. Other people in my, in my place, they will do a line of six, seven, eight butt welds in a line with flanges on the pipe at the same time. And they, they swear by it doesn't pull. There's a limit this here anything more than three four welds i really don't like flanging it and then welding three four welds after because the chances of it pulling is just it just increases so much that it's, it's just not worth it just do the butt welds then flange it after because i got four flanges as well it there's more chance of something going um there's more chance of of, of, a, of a fitting going piss so yeah i just i just leave it until the last minute also it just gives me so much more room right now so i'm welding in quarters i made i made my mind up i'm flanging it after so welding in quarters stop it pulling all over the place in the middle yeah i don't know what more to say it's just it's just welded up right now i've got my turning handle and my counterbalance 
makes it easier nice and easy wire brush to um, clean the material so about now I'm gonna jump to another video because I forgot to record hanging these flanges so hanging the flange can you see me down here hanging the flange is quite simple what I'm gonna do it's on a slide that's because uh, if you were to sit the flange straight on the pipe there'll be no gap on top big gap at the bottom we don't want that we want an even gap all the way around so the flange being on the slot opens up a gap at the top by attaching it at the top and then pulling it out you save that gap at the top and it equals out the gap either side so it's a little bit better um, I've got I've got the level point is I've got this flange basically level bolt holes wise and then I'm going to check this level down here when I'm pulling it out and this level here. So three fingers is all you need. Two at the bottom to grab the flange, your thumb touches on the pipe and then you pull it out and then you guide it while, while the tack's still um, malleable. Before it gets too, too um, solid, you, you try to move it as much as you can. So what you're going to see, I'm going to tack directly in the middle perfectly in the middle of these two bolt holes. If you if you stray side to side, by the time you flip it 90 degrees to level it off the other orientation, instead of the instead of the flanges moving nicely, they twist ever so slightly and it changes the bolt hole pattern. So make sure you, you try your hardest to make sure that your two tacks are exactly parallel to each other are exactly opposite each other. I don't know the word. And that is the technique that I use to hang my flanges basically. The next step is of course flip it 90 degrees and level the face of the flange to the long lengths of the pipe. In this case here I've got two sides to go by so whatever they are, if one of them is a bit pissed at the other, just split the difference and level it to, to that basically. The fittings are so thick that the measurements that the, that the drawers want us to get you have to shave down either the, the flange or the T. In this case here, it was easier to take material off of the flange than the T. If it was still a struggle, I'll take material off of both of them. But simple, tack on the top, make sure the bottom of the, make sure the face of the flange is good, tack the bottom, flip it 90 degrees, and then level that off. In this case here, because there's already flanges on, I will level that off to the existing flanges rather than the pipe. I'm going to be checking the measurement on the 45 to make sure that the face of the 45 is good to the center of the pipe and then I am going to move on to welding it so there's so many different techniques that you can use to weld in in my case what I do I like to have the pipe at a slight angle it's not quite 45 it's a lot less than a 45 but having it at an angle helps to speed up the welding process it's uncomfortable to have the pipe to have the flange completely flat and to, to, to weld around it in like a, a flat horizontal position. So having it slanted, it gives you a nice welding profile because it's on pulse. That's I wouldn't recommend doing it on spray transfer, but on pulse you can do it. It gives you a nice welding profile as well as it's a lot faster of a weld to do. This is all class two work. Though, though I'm welding to a higher standard than class two, the baseline is it allows for a lot of leeway in the quality of the welds if if that makes sense so so what the way how i'm doing it the techniques that you may think wow why is he doing this way here is more than adequate for what i'm doing once this pipe is completed it's probably going to be run at an operating pressure of six bar with chilled water going through it so nothing too special again the flange around 220 to 250 amps i'm pushing it 
by pushing it it gives you a nice weld profile rather than dragging it though you can do it both ways again and it will still come out nice mig welding has come a long way from what you lot may have in your head and yeah the, you can you can see for yourself if these welds look good you just believe that you can weld with mig to a high standard don't get me wrong probably not you wouldn't want to use this on certain applications but for what i'm doing it is more than adequate to give you a solid nice weld that passes x-ray tests passes class one and is yeah i don't want to keep keep badgering on about the, the mig but it works so that's all i'm gonna say but coming to the end of the video right now is the final shots of how the worlds look. Tell for yourself, let me know what you think. Maybe maybe you have a, a few ideas of what MIG is and, and, and let me know if you think this has just blown your mind as to what you can do with MIG. But with that being said, I'm gonna wrap this video up. Do me a favor, leave a like or subscribe or something like that. Show your appreciation. The more support I get in these videos, the more it makes me do better videos and more videos. So yes, enjoy, thanks for watching and goodbye.